time now to welcome in Mauricio Pedrosa. Of course, uh, you know him as Herc's co-host on Ahora o Nunca. They actually spoke to Memocho in Spanish as well. Good thing we got to speak to Memo, because pretty much like everybody else on the team is hurt, right? Oh yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, speaking of players being available, he's always yep. available. The rest of them, not so much. It's always a pleasure to be with you, especially after El Baile. Ooh, El Baile, el look baile at that. El Baile de Japón, the US Men's National. Yeah, it was a, a, a pretty great, contundente great great victoria great break, yeah. uh, uh, from Japan. <laughs> Who do you think has a worse injury stack up right now, US or Mexico? Mexico, yeah. because yeah. of the options behind said injured players for Mexico. Okay. All right, so we got two big games coming up for Mexico. Last chances for Tata Martino to make some big decisions. We're always focusing, though, on the opener against Poland at the World Cup. So as we think about these two games, let's lock in on some key position battles we'll yeah. be watching for. But before we get to that, we need to know, Mal, who's already a lock to be in the 11 against Poland. So give us your, your lineup lock. Break out the sticker opener. book. So um, this might not be as easy as it sounds, okay. right? But yes, let's start with those who we believe are already locked to start against Poland in a, a little bit like two months. So we'll start with our good guy, yeah. Memo Choa. Okay. It was great to talk to him, right? No debate. So right. no debate. With Football America is your number one on the list. Of course, right. of course. And then I think, I think both uh, left back and right back are already set. Okay. One right. of them is injured though. Jorge Sanchez is not going to play the friendly matches, but his injury is not yeah, really concerning. Them for so Jorge Sanchez starting as a right fullback, and then of the left hand side, Gerardo Arteaga. Okay. Right, okay. we're I, all clear on that, right? I think we, I think we're okay with that, unless Tata Martino, who you guys know really well, mm -hmm. truly loves Jesus Gallardo. Aye, he's the only one that loves Jesus Gallardo. <laughs> he's the only one who loves Jesus Gallardo. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think at this point that he's starting over a guy who's playing in Europe and honestly has been very, very consistent when he plays for the Mexican national team. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, I call it numero cinco, you guys call it number six, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Defensive midfielder. That's Edson. Do not call him Planepantlas Beckenbauer. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. But he Explain. doesn't like I asked him and he doesn't like That's that nickname. I won't call him again that. Um, and let's not forget this. He's probably... The player in best form right now for the oh, Mexican. Yeah. Not named Memo Choa, yeah. Not named Memo yeah. Choa. Agreed. Exactly. Agreed. So he's he's in great form. Um, and then if he's fit, if he's 100%, and close to 100%, 80%, I think Hector Herrera mm -hmm. is starting no matter what, right? For Tata Martino, that's a lock. I agree. That is a lock. All right. And then we have to move up. Give me that front forward. line. Give me that tridente. I think there's only one, one player that has his place lots hmm. here in the okay. starting 11 and we all know who that is that's honestly the only player who's fit 100 percent close to 100 percent and that's even el chucky lozano Dale. right and that's it i think those are definitely going to start against poland so we have five spots yep. that are truly question marks for the mexican national team that's a lot that's a big number. It is, and even that lock, Edwin Lozano, which I agree with you, has only played 51% of the games in Serie A, one assist, and in World Cup qualifying, one goal against mm. Honduras. And remember, I, will, I, I had a chance to talk to him on Tuesday during the Mexican national team media day here in LA, and he, he gave me the impression that he's concerned for his health in the long term. Right. Mm. He had another concussion, yep. and he had to miss two games. This is his third concussion in the last two years. Ooh. For a player like that, yep. it's not easy. No. So these are my locks for the starter for the opening game against the Poland. Okay, so you think that we've got, what, five, six of the 11 yep. sorted. That means we got five position battles that we need to keep an eye on for these upcoming games against Peru and Colombia. Let's start in the center of defense, because this, Herc, is a position that you and I have been talking about for a long time. It still seems unsettled. Yeah. That position is not sorted yet for Tata no, Martino. We only not. have two months left. I, and, and, and again, this is what I want to see, right? Yes. Not what I believe Tata is going to do. Right. I want the center backs to be Nestor Araujo Uy. and Johan Vasquez. Wow. Nestor Araujo, 30 years old. Remember, he lost. He, was, he, he wasn't able to play uh, the World Cup in Russia because of injury mm -hmm. as well. But I think this is his time. He made the top decision of leaving Europe, leaving Celta de Vigo, to come back and play against uh, again in the Mexican League for Club America. And once he was healthy, he plays 90 minutes and he plays center back, starter center back for the best 
team in the Mexican League. Yeah, this is pretty consistent with what Tata Martino has shown us uh, as far as Nestor Araujo because he's played a lot of the games for Tata Martino. Um, so this is consistent, at least Nestor Araujo for Tata Martino. I'm surprised you went with Johan Vasquez uh, and just thinking about a guy like Cesar Montes, who we've Can talked I be about honest? a lot. Can I be honest? This really surprises me. Really? It, it, when you take consideration his level of play right now and Tata Martino, he's played four out of the seven games in Serie A, yeah. only 39% of the minutes. Mm. He played four games in World Cup qualifying. Mexico only won one, and that was against the worst, worst team in, in World Cup qualifying, Honduras. And he admitted on Tuesday yes, yeah. that took a toll on his mental health. He was depressed after those games against the U.S. men's national team and Canada because he was the one who was starting those games that was not a regular starter yeah. for Tata Martino, and he felt like it was his fault that Mexico didn't perform well. Tough games. But tough games. Tough games. Now, if we go to the depth chart, right, Nestor Araujo would be taking, would be taking Cesar Montes' place. Yep. Johan Vasquez, I think he's competing against Héctor Moreno. Héctor Moreno is 34 years old, and he has only started the last two of the last seven games for Rayados de Monterrey. Yeah. So that's a tough decision for Tata Martino. And you're saying it because of the profile, two left-footed players. All right, so moving on to the midfield, right? We know Edson starting, Héctor Herrera starting. Who's playing on the left-hand side of Edson Gutierrez? I think this is the best option, and it's not Eric. Andres Guardado. It is Eddie Gutierrez. First of all, Andres Guardado is 35, Yeah. right? He's coming up an injury as well. And Eddie Gutierrez is a regular starter for Ruth Van Nistelrooy at PSV. He's left, yeah, he's a regular, I did, I did not say he started every game. Yes. He's a regular starter, and yeah, you know fourth I am 100% correct start. But he got in the with game. that assessment. Yes. So, and, and that's the big question, right? Is Andres Guardado, who's the captain of the team, is he gonna start, or is it gonna be Eric Gutierrez? Eric said, he doesn't believe he's going to start because of Guardado's experience, his, 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 his level of the captain, right? But I believe he gives Tata Martino the best option of a really solid, good box-to-box -box player. Unless Guardado is the captain of the team. Mm. He's played 177 games for the Mexican national team. But what is surprising is in World Cup qualifying, he only played, or started, I should say, four games for Tata Martino out of right. the 14. This is a very specific Poland pick for you with Gutierrez, right? Oh, yeah, this is a matchup thing because he gives you something that Guardado and, and maybe nobody else in that pool does. Yes, number one. And remember the way Poland plays. They have a, a line of five midfielders. So that's going to be a really, really, really tough matchup for the Mexican national team the way they play with only three. You're going to have your wingers coming back, uh, having a different position on the field and supporting the midfield. I believe Eric Gutierrez gives you the best, the, the best chance over Andres Guardado. All right, let's go up top. Let's talk about the All big right. guns now. So huh? who's going to play opposite to Irving Lozano? Yes. We know Tecatito Corona won't be able to play. Tata Martino is still hoping for a miracle. You're going to like well, now this he, now, now he said it might not be a miracle. That's your, huh? You're right. Uh, you, you are going to love this one. Yes, give me some Dieguito. Diego Lainez. Ooh, wow. Diego Lainez because he's a natural fit, mm. right? He's probably competing against Alexis Vega to be the starter against Poland. But Alexis Vega is usually a starter from the left-hand side. I know you can move Chucky Lozano to the right-hand side as he does for Napoli. That's, that's actually his position. But I think this is Diego Lainez's time, right? If he's one of the best talents in Mexican soccer, give him the chance to start, see what he's got, and I think Whenever he's played for the national team, he's performed really well. Uh, if he gets to play uh, under World Cup qualifying under Tata Martino, Tata Martino has been very consistent. He's played three games, 36 minutes, 23 minutes, 24 minutes. He's not played a lot for Tata Martino. During qualifiers. What? Right. What's but, going to the but, World Cup? But if you go to Gold Cup, all the games, yep. so he was a regular, and he looked good, right? Consistent option off the bench. I want to see if Tata's willing to start him. I think That's that'll the be thing. the big decision. I like why you pick him there, too, because for me, he's the closest to Tecatito. Yeah, exactly. Alexis is different. Orbelin, if you were to put him in that conversation, different. He's like Tecatito. He can break It, it really down. is a three-man race, right? It's Diego, it's Diego Lainez, Alexis Vega, and it's Orbelin Pineda for that spot. And don't forget... Uriel Antuna. Ooh. Uriel Antuna will as a likely. Starter, as a starter. Uriel Antuna will start against Peru Ow. on Saturday, playing that position. He'll get so, his chance. He'll get his chance. I, he'll get his chance. I don't like it. I think he gives you the better chance. All right, take now, me up top. Question. Take me up top. This is the biggest question. Who will start 
That's that said, he's only that. taken three. He's, he's got four. Three. He's only taken three. Uh, Says that. But we need to have a starter. <laughs> These two friendly matches, mm -hmm. Rogelio Funes Moria and Raul Jimenez, not available. So I think the question is, who's going to start against Peru? And that most likely will be, Tata Martino will be showing his hand who he believes is the starter against Poland. And I believe it will be Club Americas, Henry Martin. Ten goals so far in the Mexican League. Wow. Four assists, which speaks of what Tata Martino wants from his number nine. Not only a goal scorer, but someone who's involved in the buildup of play. And he has developed that as of recent with Club America. I love Santiago Jimenez. That's number one. Number two, I don't want to get a tattoo of El Bebote. I love Santiago that's why, Jimenez. That's why, that's why I want Henry Martin starting. And guys, I'm very concerned for Raul Jimenez. Yes, that's really the big question he's, here because he's not healthy now, but he may not be not, healthy for Qatar. He might not be healthy yeah. for Qatar. And even when he is healthy or if he is healthy, he's not exactly been productive for the Mexican national team. So there's, a, there's honestly a big chance mm -hmm. that the three strikers, the three number nine that Tata Martino takes to Qatar are Henry Martin, Santiago Jimenez, and Rogelio Funes Mori. Hmm. I'm a huge believer in what Tata Martino has shown us. He's very consistent in his calls, very consistent in his movements. Henry Martin played in seven games of World Cup qualifying. All substitute appearances, yep. but he scored some big goals yes. for Tata Martino. Yep. I, I like the idea of Henry Martin. I'm, I'm curious this, though. There's such a focus on only taking three. You got 26 spots. Why not take four, especially with Jimenez, who may well be, even at that point, an injury concern. Yep. So I think that's the wild card. If Tata Martino believes but he that told us Raul he was Jimenez... Take doesn't mean he can't change his mind, sure, right? Sure. Raul Jimenez will be 70, 80% right. fit, Is right? It? And you can use him for the game against Saudi Arabia, where you're going to have your last chance to make it past the group stage. He might take four. Mm -hmm. But as of now, Mauricio Mai. ESPN uh, reporter who follows the Mexican national team said last night that Raul Jimenez can't even train in the gym. He can even do treadmill. He's not doing stationary bike. He can do anything right now. So it's a big, big concern that he'll be fit enough just to travel with the team. Yep. It, when you go and you look at Tata Martino's decision making, uh, he may say he's only taken three, but every Mexican team sans the 2002 team took four nines. Mm. Yep. Mm. Got to have your options uh, at number nine. Mal, great stuff. Thanks for joining us here on Football America. Anytime, Thank you, you for guys. The early wake up Waking call. Waking up early. It's tough, man. I'm going to bed after this, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.